All right, y'all, you got Michael here, creative director for JD Finish Line, uh, back with another episode of Community Voices. Uh, we've got a real special episode today. Um, on the other side of this, we got uh, NBA All-Star, Minnesota Timberwolves, uh, Carl Anthony Towns. What's going on, bro? Man, hey, man, it's an honor to be here, man. This is hella, hella dope to be here. It's really good to see your face. So, you know, let's just get right into it. Um, you know, a lot of us are are lucky to get to catch your highlights on the court, but uh, you know, we know that doesn't define you. Tell no. us about yourself, you know, off the court. Yeah, I, uh, for me, I just try to stand up for what's right. I think I keep it as easy as possible as that for the fans. I think that for me, um, doing what's right, uh, I don't look for a reward. I just do it because it's right. Um, and for me, off the court, I try to improve the world as much as possible as I can. Um, especially through uh, activism and for me recently uh being a a man of color and a man of integrity it, 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 it's and a man of the community of minneapolis and minnesota i think that it's only my, my my it's my duty to go out there and and to speak about racial injustice social uh social justice uh police brutality uh because i've just seen too many events um in Minneapolis have turned uh, the wrong way for men of color. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's, it's tough. We all get involved when, when bad things happen, but you've been there since, you know, the day one. So what drives that passion? And, um, you know, not just on the Black community, but like the Afri Afro-Latinx community as well. I mean, for me, uh, I think what drives is just, I really want to see change and I want to see change for, uh, the greater good of everybody and it's not even just for me i think my biggest inspiration is when my kids come into this world i want to have the world be in a better place than when i came and to see how the world is right now how everything's going uh, i'm not comfortable saying my kids are safe in the world right now especially in the america we live in today yeah. so yeah. change america and hopefully at the same time change the world and, and bring up these, these key issues that need to be changed for people of color and uh, for the Afro Latino community and for the Afro X community. I mean, I, my job is to really keep pushing the envelope for, for equality. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's, that's something important. We always want to do something better for uh, our next decay in the future and, you know, rest in power to a proud mother and Jacqueline Cruz. How did her passing influence uh, your actions? against racial injustice I, I realized that time is not is not uh, abundant you know time is something that we only have a little bit of and i got to make the most of it it can be taken at any given minute so um i i kept you know you keep feeling like with life you say well you know i'll get to that later i'll get to that oh i'll, I'll keep doing something and i'll get there you know sooner than later i'll i'll, I'll find a way to get there um, when my mother passed, uh, it made me realize that I don't have later. There's no time to keep procrastinating. I got to act more. And um, my whole career, I've, I've been very active about you know, issues and in, in communities and uh, even as much as to marijuana, with my feelings about it. Uh, I've been very vocal about uh, social justice uh, issues, racial injustice, uh, feeling uh laws that I feel like were just too, they're too aggressive and they don't need to be there. But um, I felt that now I realized that instead of taking kind of like a hippy toe kind of approach, kind of stepping, 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 I wanted to fully run at the chance of changing the world. And I felt that this was a perfect storm and a perfect time for me to lend my voice even more. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so college in Kentucky, Drafted number one by Minnesota in 15, you were only 20 years old. Um, you know, those are your formative adult years for, for most of us folk. You know, uh, you know, in these places, there's strong connections to Brianna and George, respectively. Um, How has that affected your personal involvement? I think that for me, I, I, I just, especially in Minnesota, and then Brianna Taylor, beautiful soul, losing her life. Feel that I had to something had to change and for me I'm getting older and my life is hitting me in a, in a way and uh, I'm getting closer to that stage of being a father and as the closer you get the more you worry about the world the kids will come into and 
uh, I'm doing the hard work now. I'm not a person that just kind of likes to wing it. Um, I like to be planned in my life. I like to make sure that, okay, I'm planned for this to happen. And in planning, you know, I, like I said before, I didn't feel comfortable with my kids coming into a world like this or, and then also in a way I feel like I could have do more to affect change and put my kids in a better position. And I think that's what's really been driving me recently. Have you been back to those communities since, like back to Kentucky and, you know. I, I, I'm in Kentucky tomorrow. So um, I'm very, uh, very excited to go back there and let alone I'm going back to Louisville. So it's going to be a, it's going to be an amazing moment um for me and it's going to give me a lot of also just just give me a chance to go back to my my roots of college and also see if i can like change it over there be part of the community i think it's always so much harder to affect a community you're not part of you haven't been there you haven't felt the energy you haven't felt the culture so it's gonna be great to be there yeah and how have you seen uh you know, Minnesota change over your years, spending time there? Not enough. Not enough. Um, we've lost Orlando Castile in uh, St. Paul. And uh, you would think that would be a tragedy that would completely turn uh, how our police uh, interact with, uh, with African-American males. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't enough. And not enough change has happened because we lost another beautiful life and innocent life in George Floyd. So you know, there's a lot to be done and uh, I have to do my part to uh, make change happen. You have a message for the community out there of how we can get involved. It's just, you know, yeah, I think a community, I think for communities, they have to do one thing, especially is recognize that their voice has power, recognize that in calling your local officials, calling your state officials, that lending your voice about social injustice, racial injustice, um, social justice, excuse me, and, and racial injustice and, 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 and fighting for what's right. It, 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 we need to speak up, especially my generation. We have such a tool in social media that we utilize for so many times for the wrong reason. We need to utilize it for the betterment of the world, spreading, spreading knowledge, reliable, uh, real, truthful knowledge, um, and also uh, showing that what we need to get done, because tweeting at your officials, tweeting at your state officials, it, it, it changes everything and they listen and they do read those. It doesn't matter about if you have 5 million followers or if you have 20 followers, officials want to hear what the public and the community is speaking because at the end of the day, they're officials of that community. They're there to and, and make it as uh, safe and as best as possible. So our job as a young generation with the social media platform that we have today is to talk about change and make change happen through our voices, no matter how many followers, it, change can happen. By any yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that because that's you know that's something that I've seen good come out of this thing is, is people using their platforms as a voice um, and being able to spread messages. And that's you know that that's that's because people like you have inspired inspired that you don't need to um, you know po post things just to hear your own voice, it really is to spread that message. Always raise awareness, raise awareness in the world and bring attention to it. And then at the end of the day, my voice may bring awareness, but it's the voice of the people that will actually make change happen. And um, uh, if I, I can't stress that enough, I think that the easiest thing to do, we could go, talk about foundations, there's amazing foundations out there that could help and nonprofits, but it has to be your energy yeah i mean that's a great segue into um some foundations i know that you are personally and um involved in uh, the george floyd memorial foundation why is that special to you and and what are some things that that you've taken away from this you got i i feel the george floyd foundation is 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 like what i talked about before it's about getting the people knowledgeable in racial injustice and also having them understand what's truly going on in the world from the right resources and from the right information. And I think that so many times when we see our social media, we get so much fake news, we get fake media and we get these fake stories that, you know, people who don't know better will, will listen and believe is true when actually the facts are this. And 
Uh, I think even with the George Floyd case, that was one of the one of the big things when Derek Chauvin uh, put his police report in, and it was it was false. It, it, he he didn't die from a medical emergency. It was from a you know his the knee, and um, I think that putting spreading the right knowledge, educating people on racial injustice, and showing them how to uh, you know to inspire change and and make change happen. Uh, the George Floyd Foundation is doing great work, and even though it's in its early days of being a foundation, it's already something as powerful as any other foundation I could think of. Yeah, for sure. And you know, uh, spreading that message, spreading that truth. Um, you know, on behalf of uh, JD Finish Line, we're honored to uh, donate twenty thousand dollars to the George Floyd. Oh, man. In your name. So you know, I, we hope the funds go far, but also we hope that message goes goes even further and the involvement. Man, I, I, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you to my family over there. And um, it's just, it's an amazing donation from an amazing company, an amazing um, brand that just shows you again, just how mm -hmm. much they do care about racial injustice and social justice. So thank you guys again for the donation. It's going to go far. It's going to help people who really need it. Absolutely. And thank you for helping us spread that message. Um, Kat, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, Man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much to all the fans out there. Understand your voice is, is going to be heard. Just make it make it out there, you know, speak. Yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely. So thanks again. We wish you the best of luck. Hopefully we'll talk soon, man. Absolutely. Appreciate you, man. All right. Cool, Kat.